Hello there and welcome to Cape Nerd Collective where today we're discussing why the Mandalorian series currently streaming on Disney Plus would make an amazing RPG tabletop and video game. So let's dive into this Sarlacc pit and see just what we can find. To begin, we look at the definitions. So an RPG means role-playing game. So these are games that meet a certain criteria. Think Dungeons and Dragons. The player is free to choose how they approach the story, how they approach combat, and how they can build their character, and how that character will react and synergize with all other members in their party. This is of course assuming there will be a party. So there's rich storylines with really in-depth combat, there's different skills you can modify as you choose, you can explore and you can just tackle the world as you see fit. Then you also have The Mandalorian, which is a space western. Though it has the action and the sci-fi elements that would make it a space opera, like the Star Wars franchise, it still has a lone gunman with really good combat skills, a lot of the exploration and cinematic duels, which ground it more in the western genre. Now there might be a bit of thematic tension between a lone wanderer and a party-based system. And well, that's what makes this video so great. We are currently seeing Din Djarin's playthrough of the Mandalorian game. So let's run with the concept that the Mandalorian is in fact an RPG. I thought to myself not too long ago, yes the show is great, but what if you yourself could play the game as Din Djarin is playing the game right now and live the experiences and make the choices that he is making? I thought your home base could be the tunnels that the Mandalorians use in the first season. You use the guild to do tutorial missions where you would earn variations of XP, a whole lot of different currencies, and of course, Beskar. Here's where the character classes come into play with an RPG. You could use the collected Beskar to mold your character as you see fit. Whether you want to be stealthy, melee, small guns, big guns, or you want to be a tank with a lot of armor and big guns, like the Mandalorian heavy troopers in the first season, you're free to choose. You can even play somewhere in the middle, being a long range rifleman with whistling birds and a flamethrower like Din Djarin himself. Once you've decided your character class, you're free to continue on with the side missions, eventually advancing to the main missions where you would decide Baby Yoda's fate for yourself. So this isn't exactly a new discovery. If you search the Mandalorian RPG on the internet, there are loads of articles explaining how you are watching the progression through the game story, rather than being the player yourself. Each weekly episode acts as a quest the player would complete in the RPG, whether it is a side mission or main quest. Din Djarin discovers new locations, upgrades skills, learns about the lore of the galaxy, aids potential allies, and searches for his brethren, which the audience witnesses each week. The current formula looks at Baby Yoda's future as the main quest, while the random chores assigned to Din act as side quests because they could very easily be skipped over in the greater narrative. And that's where we get to one of my criticisms of the show. Now, when I started writing the script, it was about season two, episode four. There had been a string of episodes that acted as fillers, where the Baby Yoda saga and finding other Mandalorians was put on pause. Now, just a reminder, Baby Yoda is the name given to the child, the mean green meme machine. It is not, in fact, Yoda as a child, and nor is it Yoda's son. Or is it? I'm going to look at a timeline of season two with spoiling as little as possible. Why you ask? Because my friend Tristan has yet to watch season two, despite me telling him how great it is. So blame Tristan. Episodes one to four of season two with side quests, help this NPC, escort this NPC, meet this person who needs something from you so you can unlock the next marker, etc, etc, etc. I, like a few others I saw online, were critical of this. It made me question how long we can continue watching the game stream when we want to see the main quest and the player keeps getting involved in unimportant stuff. I was going to make the title continue on to say how the RPG aspect could be the show's biggest downfall. Then we get to episodes 5 and 6. Titled The Jedi and the Tragedy respectively, episodes 5 and 6 have essentially altered the format of the show making the arguments put forward more complicated than side quests and main quests. While not diving into spoiler territory, I can say that the Mandalorian has outright disregarded the idea of a linear storyline 
And so the show's future would be a lot more side questing and exploration based. Now these would be reasons to stop watching The Mandalorian. However, the character development, writing and direction of the show are just so good that the side quests are not just side quests, they're Mandalorian side quests. The Mandalorian establishes so much lore in terms of the new canon and the extended universe that it's worthwhile sticking around. While I understand that this could be a Game of Thrones situation where the eventual end is disappointing, I have more optimism than that. Although a few years of episodes 1 to 6 being side quests leading up to 7 and 8 being the action packed finales of each season could become a bit tedious. But again, with the quality of the show's writing, this is highly, highly unlikely. So to summarize this video, The Mandalorian is an RPG. So there are side quests that stray away from the main quest line. However, they do so much for the world building that it's worth it. While some people may become bored for now, I genuinely believe that the quality of the writing and the direction is enough to keep us hooked. As it is, we've already forgotten about Shirt and Jeans Guy. So that's all we've had for today. Tell us your thoughts on The Mandalorian and tell us if you would love to play The Mandalorian as an RPG game. What kind of character would you have? Would you be a one-man army or a team player? Do let us know in the comments below. For this is the way. As always, if you've liked this video, force push that like button down below. Subscribe for more content. Follow us on all of our social media platforms. May the force be with you.